Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Today we will discuss male infertility with a reference from Thog article about an update on the management of male infertility. If we talk about the causes of subfertility as a whole, the male factor is responsible for about 30% cases of subfertility. About 80% of male subfertility is idiopathic. If you want to study the complete topic of subfertility from NICE guideline and talk articles, go to the link in the i button on the top right corner. But how to deal a case of male subfertility starting from semen analysis till the management options, that is what we will discuss today. So first of all, I would recommend you to subscribe this channel and press the bell icon. Now what are the differential diagnoses of male infertility? Before approaching any case in obsangaini, the first thing that should come in the mind of a clinician is differential diagnosis, means what are the causes of such problem. So in case of male infertility, the list of differential diagnoses include, first of all, the psychosexual disorder, secondly, the lifestyle changes, thirdly, the genitourinary problem, then certain medical problems like mumps, orchitis, TB, PID, we will discuss that in detail later on, surgical problems, certain drugs, congenital anomalies. So if you keep these seven points in mind, you will be able to manage a case of male infertility. It's because by keeping these seven points, uh, we are now taking history from our patients. So how to take history for diagnosing the male infertility? Evaluation of a case of subfertility must begin with a detailed history of both partners. Although usually in our setups, a gynecologist rarely involve a male in the history taking, but the good practice is that the history taking must be directed to complete all the items related to infertility and that include the male factor as well. So first of all, along with maintaining the patient's dignity, privacy and confidentiality, we should ask the question about psychosexual disorders. And those questions are first of all about reduced libido, erectile dysfunction, premature ejaculation, dyspareunia, painful erection or ejaculation, fatigue and previous sexual relationship. Next come the lifestyle changes. So ask questions about occupation, physical activity, smoking or hookah, alcohol, drug abuse and also ask about the amount of frequency, amount and frequency of the drug abuse. Then comes the history related to genitourinary system. So ask about dysuria, hematuria, pain or fullness in the scrotum, testicular trauma, lower abdominal pain or tenderness. All these questions are very important to reach to the diagnosis. In the past medical history, ask about febrile illness, mumps, orchitis, history of weight gain or weight loss, medical disorders like diabetes, COPD, TB, renal, hepatic insufficiency, etc. Ask about the pelvic infections. Ask about sexually transmitted diseases in the past. Ask about history of radiotherapy or irradiation. In the past surgical history, ask about repair of inguinal hernia. Orchidopaxy, which is a surgical procedure that moves an undescending testicle into scrotum. Ask about epispadias or hypospadian repair. Ask about any prostate surgery or the bladder or testicular surgery. In the treatment history, ask about history of vasectomy and any semen analysis done and the type of treatment like clomiphene etc. Any multivitamins intake, any Hakeem treatment, IVF, ICSI or any other treatment like that. Dose and duration of treatment must be asked from the patient and any specific drugs like calcium channel blocker, for example, nephidipine or spironolactone intake or steroid intake or any uh, history of chemotherapeutic drugs intake. In the family history, ask about family history of infertility, cystic fibrosis, prostate or bladder cancer, testicular malignancy. So we have covered important point in the history. Now come to the investigations done in the male partner. Initial test for the male infertility will include the semen analysis which examines sperm concentration, mobility, morphology and other important factors. I will discuss the parameters of semen analysis with you later on. Next investigation is that of ultrasound which is done for male infertility and that include the scrotal and the transrectal ultrasound. Next is the male hormone testing, then anti-sperm antibody testing, then post-ejaculatory urine analysis. 
Next, the genetic testing and the karyotypes, testicular biopsy, infection screening. So let us discuss the semen analysis first of all. It's important to understand the complete report of semen analysis in a proper way. Semen volume for analysis should be on the average of 1.5 ml. Regarding the sperm, uh, the sperm count on semen analysis report, one thing is very important. If we talk about the sperm number per ejaculate, the average is about 39, but the sperm concentration per ml is about 15 cross genders for 6 per ml. Progressive mortality is 32% and the sperm morphology is 4% on the semen analysis report. The vitality means the live sperm on the semen analysis report and that should be at least 58% and the pH should be more than 7.2. Now, if the sperm count is less than 39 per ejaculate or less than 15 per ml, it is called oligospermia. If the sperm motility is less than 32%, it is called asthenospermia. When both number and motility are low, the condition is called oligoasthenozoospermia. When more than 4% of the sperms are abnormal on semen analysis report, it is called teratozoospermia. Now, what is WHO criteria of male infertility? When two or more semen analysis have one or more variables below 5th centile, that is called the male infertility. This is the semen analysis report and according to WHO, the diagnosis of mild male infertility problem is made when two or more of the semen analysis results show one or more variable below 5th centile. Now we have completely understood what is meant by normal and abnormal semen analysis report. What to do next? If the semen analysis report is completely normal, we will start the female investigation. If the semen analysis report is abnormal based upon the finding I told you before, then we need to repeat the semen analysis test after three months time as recommended by the NICE guideline. And on the repeat testing, if we find out abnormal result, let us say we find asthenozoospermia means less than 32% of the sperm motility, then we need to check anti-sperm antibody level. If the sperm count is less than 5 million per ejaculate, that indicates oligozoospermia and we have to do karyotyping in such case to diagnose the conditions like cystic fibrosis. If you have almost absent sperms on the semen analysis, a condition called azoospermia, then we will go for the hormone testing of the male. The normal range of FSH in adult male is 1.5 to 12.4 milli international unit per ml and for LH it is 1.7 to 8.6 milli international unit per ml. The normal testosterone in male is 10 to 35 nanomole per liter. If all hormones are in the normal range, there might be an obstructive cause of azoospermia. If FSH is raised but testosterone level is normal, that is called the spermatogenesis failure. If FSH is raised but testosterone level is low, that indicates the complete testicular failure. If both FSH and testosterone are low, that indicates the hypogonadotrophic uh, hypogonadism. Now the question arises, what causes azoospermia? The answer is that we have certain pretesticular causes for that, which include certain congenital problems like Kalman syndrome, acquired conditions like testicular trauma, testicular uh, tumors, and testosterone therapy. Secondly, there might be some uh, testicular causes of azoospermia, which also include certain congenital problems like chromosome deletion or acquired conditions, which include the previous chemotherapy, previous radiotherapy. Or we may have certain post-testicular causes, which include certain congenital problems like bilateral uh, absence of the vas deferens, or we may have other causes like diabetic nephropathy or prostatectomy. Now let us talk about the genetic testing in male infertility which can offer diagnosis for about 20% of men with subfertility and the techniques include first of all the karyotyping, secondly the Y chromosome microdeletion and the cystic fibrosis transmembrane brachylatory gene analysis CFTR. Now let us talk about the varicocele as a cause of azoospermia. Varicocele is basically the enlargement of the veins that transport oxygen depleted blood away from the testicle. And when the varicocele is subclinical, it is not palpable. In grade 1, it is palpable only during valsava maneuver. In grade 
2. It is palpated without valsalva in grade 3. There are visible veins through the scrotal skin and classically describes as feeling like bag of worms. Now the question arises, does varicose seal surgery improve the pregnancy rate? The answer is no. It doesn't improve the pregnancy rate, but it can correct testosterone concentration. Now, the sperm quality affects conception and it's written in the NICE guideline that we need to inform the people who are using artificial insemination to conceive and those who are concerned about their, their fertility that using fresh sperms is associated with higher conception rates than the frozen thawed sperms. Now, something about preservation of sperms. These are indicated especially in those patients uh, who are having Hodgkin lymphoma. Some patients ask questions related to frequency and timing of the sexual intercourse and artificial insemination. They should be informed that vaginal sexual intercourse after every second to third day optimizes the chance of pregnancy. And those patients who are using artificial insemination should have their insemination timed out around ovulation. How to do management of premature, uh, premature ejaculation? First of all, it is best managed by SSRI, the pharma pharmacotherapy. And secondly, acquired uh, ejaculation may be due to erectile dysfunction and is managed by pharmacotherapy along with a basic uh, psychosexual education. Now, which type of assisted reproduction techniques are available as management options according to the sperm counts? First is ICSI intracytoplasmic sperm insemination secondly IVF in vitro fertilization thirdly intrauterine insemination IUI let us talk about in intrauterine insemination it has got success rate of about 8 to 16 percent and the indications include first of all inability to or difficulty to have the vaginal intercourse secondly conditions that require the specific consideration for example, after a sperm washing where the man is HIV positive and also in the case of semen allergy. So what are the prerequisites before IUI? Knights recommend that screening for chlamydia trachomatis should be done before IUI. Secondly, if the screening is not done, then prophylactic antibiotics should be offered. Now, what are the chances of IUI technique success? The NICE guideline says that over 50% of women aged under 40 years will conceive within 6 cycle of intrauterine insemination. And of those who do not conceive within 6 cycle of intrauterine insemination, about half will do so with a further 6 cycles. And cumulative pregnancy rate is about 75%. Who should not be offered IUI? those with unexplained infertility, secondly with a mild endometriosis and thirdly with a mild male factor infertility. Another technique is intracytoplasmic sperm insemination. It has got the live birth rate of about 25 to 30 percent. And what are uh, indications of ICSI? The indications include first of all severe deficit in the sperm quality, secondly obstructive azoospermia, Thirdly, non-obstructive azoospermia and in the couple with previous failed IVF cycle. Now, how much is the success rate for surgical sperm retrieval? The success rate is different in obstructive and non-obstructive cases. For surgical sperm retrieval, it is 100% success rate in case of obstructive azoospermia and in the non-obstructive cases, it is 50%. As usual, I would like to complete my presentation with a quote and that is optimism produces hope and courage. Pessimism creates doubts and fear. So be optimistic because optimism is a lifestyle of achievers. Thank you so much. Wish you best of luck. Allah Hafiz.